Sir, should I have a clicker? They'll give me one. Here it comes. The slide is great. Okay, perfect. The magic clicker. Should I stand over here? I'm going to stand over here. I think this is where I'm supposed to stand. <laughs> okay, thank you everybody for joining. Kokoro, what is it? Well, we were looking for a word to try and encapsulate what it is that we were trying to do. And we were, as we were searching for the name, we, we stumbled across this word, which is, has Japanese origin. And what it means, it means heart-mind integration. Yeah, and what we need in the workplace is more people showing up more integrated, yeah? More whole, more human, more full. So we thought it was a really good word to encapsulate what it is that we're trying to do, right? How do we create environments where people can be more integrated? So that's Kokoro. And really what we're trying to do is we're trying to capture this emotion data. We're trying to capture this environmental data to see if we have the conditions for high performance, right? Or what are the conditions that we need for teams to perform at really high levels? And we're not looking at individuals. We really want to focus on the environment that we're putting the individuals in. Because the challenge is if we're constantly evaluating individuals, if we take them out yeah, of a really bad environment and we put another one into a really bad environment, the chances are that we're not going to get an increase in performance. Yeah? We're probably going to get the same mediocre performance that we got, even if it's a really high-functioning individual. Yeah? So the environment really shapes and molds how teams interact and perform together. So it's really, really important to understand the context in which we're running Agile. We have to understand the context in which we're running our processes and methodologies through. Yeah? Are we, are we putting them in the right conditions to thrive? And what we know, obviously, you could probably see a lot of this too in the world of HR, all right? we get a lot of burnout, we get a lot of people stressed. This is costing $3 billion annually. Yeah? Organizations are spending a tremendous amount of money, it's costing them a lot of money dealing with this. Yeah? So, how do we do that? Yeah? What we want to do is create environments where people can feel that they belong, feel that they feel safe. We're looking at this data uh, in a way that's really fast and easy to capture. Right? So, we're trying to visualize this data. We're trying to make it really interactive and fun to play with. So, if I tell you, here's a sentence, how do you feel or do you feel like you belong? Now I want you to translate that into an emotion, and I want you to take that emotion and translate that into a number, and then I want you to relate the numbers together, right, to make sense of it, so that we can do something about it. It's really difficult. There's a lot of steps in there, right, from a deconstruction standpoint. From a, but if I show you this bird in the cage, and I say our environment is trapping people, now we can have a more interesting, productive conversation about it. Yeah, we can imagine insights. We can imagine things that we might want to do about it. Yeah, but a number of six or a five here isn't going to give us a lot of insight. It's not going to create a lot of conversation. So what we want to do is start to increase the quality of the conversation and look at really key, key factors here, right? So we've got... Um, our team has about 50 years of experience from coaching to innovation to creativity to leadership, entrepreneurship. We work with a lot, some of the best psychometric leadership experts, biometric experts, looking at what are the factors that create high performance uh, within the context of teams. So we took those, we took that, we aggregated it, we looked at it, and we turned it into little pulse surveys, right? So eight to ten questions that can easily be distributed, answered within 30 to 90 seconds, so really quick, really fast, on an ongoing basis. And what we found is the number one thing, and I talked about this earlier today in the keynote, it's safety, yeah? Without safety, nothing works, really. So you have to have safe environments where people feel they can express themselves without fear of consequence, and they feel that that is being valued, and they feel that they're a part of something, yeah? And without that, really, you can't do anything else. You can't collaborate, you can't innovate, you can't be creative together. Number two is belonging, or a sense of inclusion, or a sense of relatedness, yeah? Where does my individual identity overlap with the team's identity? And where is that shared? If we don't have shared identity, it's going to be really hard for me to continue to see a shared future with this organization, with this team. Yeah? If it's, dis if it's disassociated or disconnected, it's going to be really, really difficult. Yeah? The individual is most likely going to leave pretty quickly. 
Yeah? So we have to find ways to include them, to integrate them, to feel like their identity is a part of the team's identity, and it's shared. Yeah? They, have a, they have a valued place in helping to create value for what it is that you want to do collectively. So that's exactly what we're looking at here with number two. We have a set of questions for each of these themes. Yeah? So we have about 30 of these different visuals that we've created, and we've matched them with different types of questions. Number three is we're looking at energy. Yeah? Do people feel challenged? Yeah? Are they, um, do they feel that they're aligned? Is it clear where they're going? Do they know how to get there? Do they have the tools to get there? Yeah, so this is looking at principles of flow, which are really, really important. Yeah, so the three of those elements are the things that we're looking at currently to try and figure out if we have a performing, a high-performing environment. And we're currently testing that um, with teams across Europe. So we've got some individual teams using um, the team tool. Uh, we're also looking at the enterprise level. We just released it with a team in Hamburg uh, with 300 people, trying to understand what is going on within this organization and what can they do with the, um, the data there to help them create an environment where people can be creative. They're, they're in a tremendously competitive environment, yeah? Digital, digital creativity. So they have a lot of turnover, they have a lot of competition, so they need to keep the best people and they have to have them perform at a really high level, yeah? Um, that's our team. We have a lot of experts. Um, this is our advisory board. So we've got psychometric experts, as you see up here, as our list of advisors. So we've got a really great network of people on board across Europe. And yeah, we're looking for more partners all the time to implement Kokoro and, and use it uh, and see, you know, how is it creating a different environment for you guys uh, to perform at higher levels. So. That, that's it. Please check us out online. Send me an email. Uh, come visit me at the booth. I'll be here for a little bit longer. And if I have any questions, too, I'd love to, if that's possible. Do we have time for questions? <laughs> Anybody want to spit out? Good? Yes? Um, so we look at, there's three elements to safety. Um, it's appreciation, it's integrity, and it's empathy. Yeah, so those are the three key components for safety. Um, and when we have those things in place, then people can feel that they can express themselves. We also, I mean, just when I was talking about today in the keynote, I mean, if you want to do it anecdotally, next time you're in a meeting, just watch how many people get to speak. <laughs> yeah, and see if there's equal speaking time. If they don't have equal speaking time, there's no safety. Full stop. Yeah. I coach a lot of teams. I don't see a lot of equal speaking time usually. Yeah. It's usually dominated by one person. It's usually the highest paid person in the room. It's called the hippo effect. <laughs> the highest paid individual's opinion, which is usually useless, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Good. Anybody else? Questions? I get a lot of questions around the, the data. You know, what do you do with it? How do you get it? Um, yeah, one, of the, one of the things up there, I don't know if you can put the slides up just really quickly again. Go back. I just want to show you guys one thing here. So it's really, really important that you give the information to the people who need to make the decision. Yeah? And the problem is, is that we hoard information in particular areas of the organization and the people who are supposed to make the decisions or are empowered to make the decisions don't ever get the information they need to actually make those decisions. And then we wonder why they're, they're not happy or don't feel empowered, right? So like this, what we do is we give the information back to the team in real time so everybody sees the data. There's no admin here. There's no filter here. Everybody sees the distribution. They see where they are versus the team. Yeah, and now I can have a conversation here, right? I can see where everybody on my team is. I can see the spread of how everybody's feeling. I don't know who answered in these different ways, but I can see how we answered, yeah? And that's really important. So it's, it's, it has to be anonymous, right? People have to feel safe to be able to, to accurately do it. And then now we can have a conversation. I can say, how do we get people more aligned here? How do we get people more connected? So we're, we're, I think we're missing some of this sometimes in, in most survey tools, yeah? 
um, it gets hoarded, the information gets hoarded. And if you want quick, distributed, fast-moving teams, you gotta give them the information. They gotta deal with their own issues. You gotta empower them to do what it is that you've hired them to do, yeah? So I think that's a really important way. So we're, we're working on how much information do we need to give the teams, how many suggestions do we need to, to give them in order to help them get tighter uh, coherence, yeah? Converge on some of those things, so I think that's really important. So focus on environments, not individuals, and give them the information. Let them deal with it. See what happens. <laughs> Good. That's it. Thank you.